guys, it is um, Sunday evening. It is currently 10, till 12, 10 to 12 um, on Sunday evening, so we have 10 minutes to go until Booktubeathon uh, officially starts on my side of the world anyway. Um, and I have decided that I am going to try and stay up. I'm not in work tomorrow until the afternoon, so I'm able to kind of sleep in a little bit in the morning, which means that I can stay up a little bit later. So I'm going to try up, try and stay up um, maybe an hour and get a little bit of reading done. Um, now I am a little bit tired, I can feel my eyes kind of getting a little bit tired because I was out all day yesterday and um, I was up early this morning to go horse riding so I am feeling a little bit tired um, so I don't know, I might start like dozing off while I'm reading and if that happens I'm going to have to uh, go to sleep because otherwise I'm not taking the book in properly. So um, yeah, but I do want to get a little bit of reading done and um, try and get a head start. So earlier on on um, Twitter I asked, uh, I put up a poll to try and figure out what book to read first and if you can see that there it is, was a close tie actually, um, Always and Forever and The Princess Diarist were tying for a while but Always and Forever um, Lara Jean uh, by Jenny Han is after winning. So that is what I'm going to start off with and I think that'll be a really nice one to start off with as well because the last time, the last books I've read in this, this series, the um, To All the Boys I've Loved Before and P.S. I Still Love You, um, I read them really quickly, I flew through them. So I am going to start reading, um, I can get this, oh. I'm going to start reading Always and Forever, Lara Jean. Um, I keep calling it Always and Forever, even though the actual name of it is Always and Forever, Lara Jean. So I'm going to start reading that now and hopefully get a little bit of progress done with this one because I am working late this week. I'm working 1 till 10, which is just such a crappy shift to work, especially in terms of like a readathon. Like I don't feel like I'm going to have as much reading time as I usually do so I'm going to try and get up earlier in the mornings just to give myself a little bit of reading time but every time I'm on a late shift I tell myself to get up early to do things to bring the dogs for a walk etc etc and I never do but I'm going to really really try this week so we'll see it might not work um, but that's this for now and I will update you guys in the morning and we'll see how far I got we'll see how late I slept in as well um, so yeah I'll see you then hey guys so it is Monday morning and I'm actually just out on a walk with the dog so I managed to read for about 45 minutes last night I read um, about 10 chapters of Always and Forever I got up to chapter 10 and so far I have really really enjoyed it it's really really cute it took me a couple of chapters to kind of get back into the swing of the story and the characters and stuff and kind of remember who people were um, but it's just so cute like it's just it almost makes you sick it's so sweet sometimes like there's one bit where uh, Lara Jean's boyfriend learns how to um, wants to learn how to braid so he can braid her hair and then he like practices on her hair and there's just something about that that's just so cute I just like I can't even deal with it like it's just so cute um, but there is like I'm just like watching where the dogs are um, there is a bit in it like, at the, like literally in the first chapter where Lara Jean is talking about something that she hopes to happen and like straight away like you know like you know well that's not going to happen because that's what she wants to happen and that's what everyone else expects to happen so that's not going to happen that's not going to happen so what she thought was going to happen has not happened now and like this is really cryptic but like it's just one of those things where I was like well I could see that coming from like a mile off um so yeah but uh, I have really really enjoyed it um I think I'm on like 25% so if I get a little bit done today like through to and from work and stuff um, and then a little bit after work and I should probably be almost finished it I hope um, but we'll see it is absolutely gorgeous out today um, which is so typical seeing as I'm working until 10 it would have been a perfect day to just after work to pan out in the garden for a few hours but obviously not um, I did get up a bit earlier today to watch Game of Thrones so I could have read but I actually watched Game of Thrones because I knew if I didn't watch it I would have just been spoiled online all day because obviously I work online and it's like impossible to when I'm, you're working online as much as I am it's impossible not to figure out spoilers and um, so yeah so that was good Um kind of killed me a little bit at parts uh, as always for this Game of Thrones episode and um, so yeah I did really enjoy that. Hey guys, it is Tuesday morning. Um, excuse me if I look a little bit rough, but um, I. Sorry. Um, my hay fever is at me, I can feel it. Uh, 
though the grass has been cut, so I think that's why. Um, but yes, I finished Always in Forever Lara Jean last night uh, by Jenny Han, and I actually ended up completing two challenges for that. So read a book with a person on the cover, and no, three. Read a book with a person on the cover, read a hyped book, and read a book in one day because I read it within 24 hours. Um, so that was great. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I gave it five out of five stars. I just thought it was super sweet. You were, I was able to fly through it. I fell in love with the characters all over again. Peter Kay is like my perfect boyfriend. Like I wish he existed in real life because I would fall in love with him so hard. Um, yeah, he was just amazing. Um, and I just love Lara Jean. I love her family. I love her parents. Um, I do think there were times where it was a little bit predictable. But I didn't really mind that either. Um, I also like, I really, really dislike Margot, who is... Uh, and Lara Jean's oldest sister I just don't think she's a very nice person a lot of the time she I don't know there's just I think I've said this before when I was right talking with the other books but yeah I just really don't like her um but I love Kitty and I would love I know this is like the end of the chapter the end of the road 100% for Lara Jean but I would love some sort of spin-off for uh Kitty when she's older when she's a teenager because I feel like she would have some pretty interesting adventures because she is just such a spunky kid and um, so I'd love to see a story about her when she's an actual teenager and going through her own teenage dramas. So yes, that's five stars. I absolutely loved it. I'm reading When Light Is Like Water by Molly McCoskey. This is about a woman, an American woman, who was married to an Irish man um, and when she was younger, but she had an affair. And she has, I think, returned to Ireland and she's kind of revisiting her past a little bit and thinking about things that she did and I think she's trying to maybe get a little bit of redemption I'm not really sure and um, but I'm about 30, pa 30 pages into this at the moment it's not too long so I'm hoping I should be able to finish it by to the end of today I don't know um but yeah so I'm glad to be finally reading this because I've had it on my shelf for a while but I love this cover as well I say, say this every time I pick this book up but I just I do really really love this cover um so yeah Yoni. hey is that nice is that nice what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh. Ow, don't kick me. Don't kick me. <laughs> hey guys, it is Wednesday morning um, and I am just currently going to try and read a little bit before I go into work. I didn't, um, that's my dog playing with the toy. I didn't get up as early as I wanted to this morning. I ended up falling back asleep. Um, but I did finish um, When Light is Like Water last night on my way home from work. This was a really short book. It was only like 216 pages. Um, so I got through it really, really quickly. Um, and I did really, really enjoy this. I think I enjoyed it more than I thought. I gave it like 3.5 stars. Um, and as I said before, it's about an American woman who's living in Ireland. She was married to an Irish man. And she's kind of looking back at her marriage and the affair she had that kind of destroyed the marriage. Um, and it's a very quiet book. Um, it's kind of one of those quite ni quiet, nice reads. A bit more character driven than plot driven. Um, and yeah, it was just it was just a nice read. I kind of liked the fact that there was a lot of love in it. Um, she definitely loved the man that she was having the affair with, but she also loved her husband a lot, and her husband definitely loved her. There was nothing nasty that happened in it. You know, there was no no violent moments or no nasty moments. They they loved each other. It was just that I don't know. She just needed that something extra. Um, and had an affair. I don't really know. Like, but. I don't know, there was just something about it that I really enjoyed how present the love was in this book and how present it was like in the pages and in the writing and stuff. Um, and there's like some explorations around her own relationship with her mother because um, at the start of the book, like years later, her mother has recently passed away and she's kind of talking about her mother and her relationship with her mother and stuff and all of that is just really, really interesting. So I gave this a 3.5 stars and I think people that might like uh, Donal Ryan's book um, might like this one. Um, so yeah, it's a kind of a similar kind of style of writing, I think. Next book I have decided to read is Unblemished by Sarah Ella, our own Sarah Ella from Booktube. Um, I, as I said in my Booktube TBR, I've had this book since like 
the month it came out because I pre-ordered a hardback copy of it because um, obviously I wanted to support Sarah and uh, I never read it so at the moment I am 56 pages into this at the moment and so far I am enjoying it I haven't really gotten to the story yet or like really what's happening no reveals really have been um, talked about yet but they're just about to be talked about so I'm eager to see kind of what it's like. Um, it's reminded me a tiny bit of super supernatural, no not supernatural, uh, shadow hunters. It's reminded me a tiny bit of shadow hunters at the moment but I will see. Hi guys it is Friday morning um, and I managed to finish Unblemished by Sarah Ella last night as I thought I would. So as predicted I did give this three out of five stars in the end. It did improve itself for me um, in the end. Um, it did get a little bit better and it did get interesting enough where I am pretty like eager to read the next one and see what happens but there were like a good few different things in this book that did kind of irritate me at times. I do have a pretty lengthy review of it on Goodreads as well so I'll link that below um, as I do all my reviews. So just to be honest like what just the real like main thing I disliked about this book was the main character and just the way she acted a lot of the time just really really annoyed me. There were some parts in it where like it's kind of clear the way she reacts to certain things that she is a vegetarian. I don't know if she's vegan but she's definitely a vegetarian and she makes a lot of kind of comments to herself about the other people eating meat around her and I just didn't really like that. Um, I'm a vegetarian but I kind of um, of the viewpoint that it's a lifestyle choice and it's easier for some people um, than it is for others. Some people could adapt to it very, very easily. Other people could find it very, very hard and even like, you know, hard for them health wise um, to just eat vegetables and, you know, like not eat meat at all. Um, and I just didn't really like the way she was treating the people like in her in her mind. Like, but she was just like making these comments to herself, and I just felt like it didn't help with the kind of assumptions people have about vegans and vegetarians and how we are and the way people like will slag vegetarians and vegans a lot. And I just didn't feel like that helped uh, that assumptions that people have about those things. So that just really irritated me. Um, and there were a lot of references to like other movies and songs and stuff in this. And I think it was strong enough, the writing was strong enough that it didn't need those references, that the characters didn't need to reference so many other things in pop culture and um, movies and stuff. Um, so that kind of took me out of the story every time that was mentioned. And as I said, like this, the writing was strong enough, it didn't need those. So um, yes, but I did really enjoy it. I really love the character of Kai and he is just some really great character development. I am like there is a little bit of a love triangle in this book but I liked how it kind of ended up um, and how it has kind of been developed. Um, so I am definitely like team Kai uh, if there are going to be teams with this one but I really really loved him um, so let me know if you've read this book and if you like him or not or if you prefer Joshua. Um, so yeah, three out of five stars. I am 68% through with the Princess Diarist um, on my Kindle. Um, and I am really, really enjoying that. She is definitely very, very eccentric. Um, she was talking about some parties she was at. Um, one particular party she was at near the start of the filming of Star Wars. And she was kind of one of the very few female females in the cast and crew for Star Wars. Um, so she was kind of surrounded by males. And she was only 19, so she was pretty young. And I actually kind of forgot how young she was when she was doing Star Wars. Because I feel like the character of Princess Leia is so mature and so commanding. That you forget in real life that she was probably very shy and insecure and young um, in herself. And... She was talking about this party anyway and that they were all trying to get her drunk and at one point they were like trying to take her somewhere when she was drunk and that just made me feel really really uncomfortable that they did that. Um, now like you know like this is just her view of it, her like memories of it so it could have been different but I don't know there was just something about it that like really kind of made me feel weird about that um, and that's kind of the point where Harrison Ford kind of saves her from the crew who were trying to I don't know what they were trying to do to her and then he took her away and that's kind of where their affair started and um, so that was pretty interesting but I am looking forward to finishing up the rest of this book now and um, it's a pretty quick read as I said I read like almost all of it yesterday um, and there was a chunk in the middle that was just like her poetry and diary um, bits from her diary and stuff so that was really really quick to flick through um because they weren't very long uh so yeah i am really really enjoying this it'll probably be like a 3.5 stars maybe um but i'll get back to that later obviously and today i'm also going to try and start two boys kissing by david levithan and um, this is a pretty short book as you can see um i'm actually working um earlier than i thought i was going to be today uh because i just had to fill in i had to start earlier because someone was sick so 
um that was actually grand for me because i'm actually going out later uh with my other work friends um to we're just gonna have like a friday night out together so i probably won't be doing that much reading unless it's like on the bus home late tonight um so i'll probably read this maybe on the way in or i could just end up reading the princess Diaries. to be honest i'll have both of them with me but i'll definitely make a start to this at some point tonight unless i'm like really really drunk and can't read but normally when I'm drunk I still read in the bus home to be honest so I could still end up reading it so we will see. Hi guys it is Saturday morning and I'm actually just up in the shopping centre I'm just about to go to the library and just change around my books and get some new listening books for my dad Um, so just about to go in there and maybe do a bit of shopping I don't know Um, I have done very little reading of Two Boys Kissing I have it with me because I might get something to eat and read while I'm up here um, but yeah, so um, as predicted, I did finish The Princess Diarist yesterday on the way into work. Um, I gave that 3.5 stars. And I did really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, I just, I really liked all the Star Wars references in it. But like, it wasn't absolutely amazing. Um, it was okay. Like, it wasn't great. But I did, because I did really enjoy the Star Wars references. And there were just some bits and bobs out of it that I did find very, like, just... I wouldn't really have thought about before I didn't know about Carrie Fisher so that was really great so yes I don't have too much to say about it 3.5 stars and I actually forgot to mention a book that I finished the other day yesterday and that was Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wine I think it's by or Elizabeth Wien I'm not sure how to say her second name um, and this is a World War II um, novel about a woman who has been she is like a British spy and she has been captured by the Nazis in France and she is being interrogated and she's kind of telling her story. Um, and I listened to this in audiobook and I finished it this week. I f like I read half of it this week, so I finished it this week. So I'm just going to count that as my reading a book outside challenge because I read all my audio or listen to all my audiobooks while I'm walking to and from the train. So I'm outside when I'm listening to them. But I gave this one five out of five stars. I just thought it was absolutely excellent. I just loved the twists and turns it took. Um, the narrators were absolutely fabulous. I would highly recommend listening to that one on audiobook because I really, really enjoyed listening to it on audiobook. Um, and I think I would have enjoyed it just as much reading it, but I'm really glad that I decided to listen to it because I just had a really good experience listening to it. Um, there were definitely a few lumps in my throat near the end. There were specific passages near the end that just really, like, really made me feel a bit emotional. Um, so yeah, it was a different kind of take to the war that I've never read about before. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that. So now I'm going to go and maybe read a bit more of Two Boys Kissing. I don't know. As I said, I didn't read much last night. I did go home on the bus, but uh, I didn't read because I was a little bit drunk, too drunk. So uh, yeah, I kind of ended up like falling asleep on the bus. So that was great. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and do that today. Once I can settle down later on this evening, I might get a big chunk of it read. Um, and I'll update you guys then. Hey guys, it is uh, late Sunday afternoon and I just want to do a very quick update before I wrap up this uh, week and upload my video. Um, so I finished Two Boys Kissing last night. I stayed up to like 2am to read it um, because I got really into it and then I just, you know, it was pretty short so I'd gotten so far into it that there was no point in me stopping really. Um, I really, really enjoyed this uh, like it's a very powerful book and it's poignant um, and it's important I think. Um, the main kind of story is around these two boys who are basically trying to break the Guinness World Book of Records for like their kissing for 32 hours um, and it's kind of about them then it goes through other kind of uh, gay uh, teenagers and um, gay men and telling their kind of stories and stuff and it all kind of wraps up into these like they're all kind of connected in a way. Um, so I did really enjoy it. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I did not give it 5 stars because it took me a little while to get into the story. I felt very disconnected to it at the start. But I did end up really enjoying it in the end. Um, I got a little bit, I was a bit worried. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this book. Because it did take me quite a while to really find my groove with it. Um, and I got really worried because I know this is a very beloved book. And I was like, oh god, like what if I don't like it? But then after those kind of worries went away, by the time I was like almost halfway through the book I was like sucked right into the story so it was grand um, and I really enjoyed it and four out of five stars. And right now I am reading Eleanor by Jason Gurley which was my book for I bought because of the cover um, and at the moment I'm really really enjoying this. I'm 100 pages in and um, so I'm not too far in this is like almost 400 pages, like 360 pages um, so I won't get this finished today but I might try and read maybe another 100 pages so or so tonight um, but I definitely won't get this finished this week but um, I am really enjoying this one so far. Um, 
so yeah so for my wrap up this week I have read six books in total um, and yeah so I'm pretty happy with it I got all, almost all of the challenges done as well I think a really quick recap and um, my first book was Always and Forever Lara Jean by Jenny Han I gave that, that one five out of five stars I loved it the second book I read was When Light is Like Water by Molly McCloskey gave that one 3.5 stars and um, the next one I finished was Codename Verity by Lisbeth Wine that was my audiobook gave that one five out of five stars loved that one the next one I finished was Unblemished by Sarah Ella, I gave that one 3 stars. Then there was The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher, 3.5 stars. And Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan, that was 4 out of 5 stars. So I had a pretty good reading week. Um, so please let me know what you guys think of the reading. I'm sorry this vlog is so long, um, but I hope you guys enjoy it if you get to the end of it. Um, but please leave a comment down below uh, about how you got on with the booktubeathon. I would love to know, and I'll see you guys again next time.